Welcome back to Yahoo Finance. Just want to let you know the Dow is now off 672 points. That means we have fallen to a level that the Dow was at before Donald Trump was elected president in 2016. The Dow now off 672 points. And that's despite incredible efforts by the Federal Reserve to backstop credit markets and to keep money flowing. Joining us now to talk about this is David Zervos. He's Jeffrey's chief market strategist. And David, the last time you were with us on Yahoo Finance, you said, this was two weeks ago, the Fed needed to go early and needed to go big. How can they go much bigger? It's unlimited, right? They've pretty much, uh, they've done that. They, they, they've done about as good a job as you could have imagined. But again, they are solving liquidity problems. They're not really in the business of solving solvency problems. And uh, we have a pretty serious solvency problem. If people cannot get back to work, then not exactly sure you know, how, how the solvency problem gets solved other than through uh, you know, the ugly... The ugly, uh, the ugly way, which is uh, mass layoffs, large unemployment, and uh, and a very, very uh, messy, messy recession that could get even uglier than that. So they're doing what they can. Uh, the 50 basis point to start intermeeting was perfect. I think they probably could have gone earlier to zero, but they got to zero. They initiated a very large QE program and brought back the CPFF and the PDCF. And now today we get better turns on the CPFF. We get unlimited QE, which means they could come in and do, you know, hundred billion in a day if they wanted to. They added agency CMBS, which is about, I think about 750 billion of securities they could buy in the multifamily and uh, agency CMBS, commercial real estate area. They added uh, something called the Main Street Lending Facility, which they didn't give us any details on, but sounds very politically correct. We're going to try to lend to some businesses on Main Street <clears throat> and two big corporate facilities, which are going to be very important buying IG corporate bonds. And you see that in the in the ETFs today, they're up quite substantially, LQD and the like, uh, solving some of the stresses for investment grade corporates and lending directly in a, in, a, in a primary facility to corporates in the investment grade arena. All of these are being capitalized without Congress uh, with the Exchange Stabilization Fund, the ESF, the, that is being pledged as collateral for the lending that the Fed is gonna do uh, until the Congress earmarks a bigger number, and that bigger number that was talked about over the weekend is about 400 billion. So about 10 to 12 times what the Fed is doing in this package on Monday morning is what Mnuchin is asking for. So it's it's big, but but we still have uh, we still have plenty of uh, bumps in the road, and we're just trying to make sure that the bumps don't create any permanent damage, and that's what the Fed's trying to do. Hey, David, it's Julia LaRoche. Um, I'm interested in the new facility um, that the Fed will be buying investment grade corporate bonds. And my question to you is, we hear a lot of folks talk about what's going on in the corporate bond space, the junk bond space, and the concern around the triple Bs and the potential for them to enter into that junk bond status. So how is this not a risk for the Fed? Help me understand that. Thank you. Yeah, I think there's going to be some arm twist. It's a great question. I think there's going to be some arm twisting at the rating agencies to try to be a little slow on the downgrades and give them a chance here. Um, I don't know if they're in cahoots or not, but they probably should be. But yeah, when we start to see that big bubble of triple Bs, as you as you rightly point out, uh, get downgraded, it's going to be a lot harder for the Fed to lend against any asset uh, in corporate space, lend directly to those corporates or purchase those corporate bonds um, in these new programs. These new programs are not that big, right? This is only 300 billion total. There's 10 billion that's been earmarked for the corporate, uh, the corporate stuff on the primary, 10 billion on the secondary, and I think 10 billion in the CPFF. So, you know, they're going to have to step up. That said, as I understand it, the ESF, the Fed's what the Fed is taking as collateral for the lending from the Treasury is about 90 billion in total. Uh, so I think they still have some firepower, but uh, you know that's not the 400 billion that's being uh, that's being asked for. So again, I, I want to stress this is all great for illiquidity. It's great for the sort of short-term stopgap measures. It still is not necessarily going to solve what equities look at, which is long-term earnings and long-term viability and solvency. And that's 
that's why the market's struggling today. And we'll continue to struggle until we get better news. Hey, David, it's Julie here. Um, so what is going to help on that front? As we know, the stimulus package has been stalled out now in Congress. We had St. Louis Fed President James Bullard saying in an interview, I believe yesterday, that we could see 30% unemployment. Is there any stimulus that can even solve for that problem now? I mean, I think it's about getting people back to work in a safe and productive environment. That's what solves the problem. So it's testing, it's cures, it's vaccines, it's all the things we're all hoping for. And as much money as can be thrown at that should be thrown at that. I think that's probably far more valuable uh, long-term investment than um, you know saving uh, a, a small number of jobs or companies that, that may be on the brink uh, because of their leverage of bankruptcy. Um, that said, you know, I and I think you discussed this uh, in the last segment when I was listening in. There is a contingent out there that says, you know, you're going to weigh off a Great Depression with a pandemic. At some point, the Great Depression becomes more uh, problematic or more of a negative for the for the economy, the global economy as well as the U.S. economy, and and you just sort of put people back to work and let the chips fall where they may. That's going to become. I think Gary Cohn tweeted that out last night. Lloyd Blankfein had a tweet along those lines uh, yesterday as well, and we saw the president uh, tweet something along those lines. That's going to become after 15 days a really really political, nasty, messy, ugly debate about what to do next if we don't have a safe work environment for the masses. Hey, David, Brian Chung here. So something that caught my eye about the Fed announcement was that Main Street lending program that you were touching on, but they didn't actually announce anything. They just said this would be coming down the pike at some point down the line. And I've been told that the Federal Reserve is talking to people on Capitol Hill. So it seems like maybe this was messaging from them saying, hey, give us the authority to do something like this, because it's a little vague under 13.3 to what degree they could do something like that. Um, what do you see as the where the Fed is trying to toe the line between trying to get fiscal policy to really step up to the plate here as the Fed tries to plug all these holes with these different facilities? So, so let's also be clear. The Fed is engaging in fiscal policy, right? This is fiscal policy. When you put $30 billion of capital at risk and lend 10 to 1 leverage, $300 billion out to the economy, you are engaged in a fiscal activity, not a monetary or a liquidity provision activity. So this is fiscal, and that's why the Treasury has to be involved with the Fed, because the Fed is not allowed to do fiscal policy by law. So the Fed is facilitating the Treasury's direct step into fiscal with the use of an asset like the EFF. The question is, does the Treasury have more uh, things up its sleeve? Could it, for example, I was speaking with an old colleague at the Fed that I work with, could the Treasury pledged the national parks as an asset to the Federal Reserve and gain access to 10 to 1 leverage on the value that they see of those. I have no idea. They can get pretty creative, though, in terms of what they can uh, do for size here if Congress wants to be stubborn about the debate between the split of benefits that are going to go to capital versus labor in their aid package. And that's what this debate is all about. I do think that message, you're absolutely right. That was a message that, hey, we're not leaving Main Street out. We're not here to just bail out corporates and banks and primary dealers. We're here to help Main Street. We got a facility. We're ready to fund it. Just give us the money to do it. The interesting thing is they didn't put any, not put any sort of meat on that bone. And, and I think yep. it's a difficult one to do. So I'd be very curious what it looks like. I'm sure they're struggling a little bit with exactly how you do that. It's got to be with the SBA, but it's a tricky one. All right, David Zervos is Jeffrey's chief market strategist. Thank you. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.